so now this is the concept of overfitting so overfitting is this concept where your model is kind of trying to memorize the data points in your training data set and kind of you know you are fitting a mod it, it kind of tries to learn that noise in that data as well so intuitive definition of overfitting is overfitting occurs when your model follows a training data set very rigorously that is very low training error but it may not work well on generalized test data set or high generalization error for example it's, it's exactly the same case as that person who cramps a lot before exams right we all have that friend who cramps a lot before exams he tries to memorize everything by heart and he thinks that okay if he has learned that everything probably probably he might be able to do very well in the exams but in real life when he would uh, if your test is basically within the book right then he probably would do very well because he has memorized everything but if the test is slightly on a conceptual level right if the exam is on a conceptual level or in real life application when the things are not exactly from the textbook that's when he would probably fail and that's exactly what is happening in case of our model here as well it has learned perfectly everything very well in the linear in the training data set now because of that it has learned probably something wrong right in this particular case if you remember we want the model to basically learn a sinusoidal relationship between y and x in this case in order to fit to every data point what it has done is it has learned definitely something which is not sinusoidal this is definitely not a sinusoidal curve that we wanted the model to learn in the first place so obviously in the, this if, if you're giving a training example this is your training data set right for any data set in this particular set it performs spectacularly well the error on any of the data point is extremely low but if you give it any other point from the sinusoidal curve you will probably see there's a huge error right so that's something that is that is the problem of overfitting right you have something so this is the underfitting and just right and the overfitting model right so in case of training data in the first case underfitting you basically have something that doesn't pass through majority of your points right it just just kind of barely does something and then there's something which is almost right and then there's an overfitting which is basically a lot of it right now there's nothing really wrong with being a lot of right except the problem is that in a real life scenario if the data is like this then probably in case of a real life scenario it would not probably perform very well that's a concern so that is a problem that is called uh, that is called a overfitting problem and obviously bias is low but then the problem is there's something called variance which becomes very high and we'll talk about variance in a while uh, so before we kind of get into what is uh, bias on variance and the trade-off between them we'll talk about this concept called overfitting and regularization so what is this concept of regularization regularization is like uh you want to kind of tackle this problem of overfitting you do not you do not want the model to kind of learn everything so uh, accurately from the training data set you want to kind of penalize it for being absolutely so correct right so that sounds something which is uh, slightly uh, counterintuitive so now let's understand the concept of regularization to get an idea of what we are actually talking here so concept of regularization is this that John doesn't know what to do in this case, right? So he asks his friend Jay about this and Jay kind of tells that uh, as a parent, uh, Jay is very cautious about the future of the children, right? So he wants them to be successful in life, but without being strict with them. He took a decision about how much flexibility should they be given, should be given to children during their upbringing. Too much restriction may suppress the development of character and too much of flexibility may also spoil their character, right? So Jay decided to overcome the situation by the idea of regularization. So regularized flexibility, which is to give them enough flexibility, but give them enough regularization as well, right? So that's the concept that we are going to use as well. So we're going to ask the model to learn, but then also kind of try and regularize that learning, right? So we don't want to, we want the model to kind of learn as much as it can from the training data, but we are going to impose a certain constraint on it as well. So that's the problem. So this is the same thing, right? So, the, so what happens in case of overfitting, right? So John, John doesn't really like mathematics, but let's now understand what happened in case of overfitting. What is the exact thing that happened? So if we understand that, we would know what is the thing that we want to constrain. So in case of overfitting, what happened was when we were when the model kind of learned crammed the entire training data points. What happened was basically the overfitting behavior was when basis functions overlap, which is the coefficients of adjacent basis functions. Uh, grow large and cancel each other right so what happens now let's try and understand what happens in case of overfitting so this is our initial equation beta 1x plus beta 2x is 
this beta 3 x q and so on and so forth right so in case of overfitting what happens is basically the the values the coefficients of functions adjacent to each other the basis functions which are adjacent to each other the values of this individually become so high so this probably might become extremely highly positive and this would probably become high negative so then if you have beta highly positive number into something and then highly negative number into something then probably addi addition of them probably might be uh, you would probably get to some value the, the summation of these two things probably would be extremely small right in case x values are uh, in case the x values are normally low you know not very high this is very small if x is small but in case x values are large enough so this difference between beta 1x plus beta 2x square would be extremely high and that is something that you don't want because that is a problem that is happening here right because in small x values the model learns the perfectly everything perfectly well it's when the x values tend to go slightly out of the small value region right it's the x values that tend to be higher this model would fail absolutely right because this model is basically trying to uh, memorize that by you know learning the wrong thing right it's trying to kind of make this highly positive highly negative such that the summation of these two is coming out to be absolutely very small value now because of that what is happening is uh, you are trying to kind of learn something which is absolutely specific and gonna happen if your x values are small but soon and later if your x values are not very small your model is gonna fail disastrously and that's what you want to kind of contain so what you want to do is you want to make sure that your model learns as much as possible but you want to place a constraint on the beta values right you don't want the beta values to kind of uh, you know be either highly positive or highly negative you want to kind of constrain their uh, values so that's exactly something that can be done in three ways so l1 regularization l2 and elastic net so now we are going to define we discuss the three different regularization method and the way these two methods basically work is the, there are basically two different methods they're not really three there's l1 and there's l2 and then elastic net is just combination of l1 and l2 so l1 is basically you are kind of penalizing the sum of absolute values for regression coefficients right so this was your co cost function if you remember cost function was 1 by 2m into error the target minus prediction square error right you remember this was a square error from previous lecture so now you want to penalize the model if your values of your coefficients are very high so what you do is you say that you know what this is a cost function so this is a cost function to make things you know for the model to learn the predictions correctly and to that you add a part which basically is the modulus of your parameters right so this part so if you if you remember the problem the whole concept of our cost function was basically the thing function that we want to kind of minimize as a model kind of uh, goes through all the data points right so that's 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 the basis thing that that's the only thing that we kind of want to minimize in earlier case our cost function was just the error function which was prediction minus target we wanted to kind of minimize prediction minus target in case of l1 regularization we want to minimize the prediction minus target plus we have added this particular thing as well which is a summation of the modulus of the parameters right the values of the coefficients the coefficient values if the value the summation of those values is minimum we know that we have kind of slightly avoided overfitting so what is l1 l1 is basically the so here we have as we have said here we are familiar with the first step of the cost function that is something we have already studied uh, by adding to the theta cost function which we want to minimize so the cost function is something we want to minimize using gradient descent or whatever other technique we want to do so now we have also added because we want to minimize the coefficients also so what we did slightly trickily is basically add to that cost function the, we already have the previous part we want the model to learn as much from the data as possible but we want to place a constraint right so we what did we do to place the constraint we added that summation of modulus of uh, parameter values right so now hence uh, and clearly you can see that we have not included theta zero in penalizing the intercept right so here the theta here we add all the values starting from n equals to one right so we do not penalize the coefficient with the one which is without the coefficient right theta zero but we penalize all the other coefficients which are x x square coefficients x cube coefficient and so on and so forth 
so now suppose the model has 100 coefficients so what is the problem what is what are we trying to actually achieve by doing all of this the understanding is this that in case of l1 regularization the thing that we are trying to do is basically suppose the model has 100 coefficients but only 10 of them have non-zero coefficients so this is effectively saying that 90 of those coefficients can actually be removed right and are probably useless so you know what you want to kind of get rid of those and L1 regularization of sorts exactly does that L1 regularization basically uh, is basically the concept where you're reducing down your coefficients the ones that are absolutely not relevant of our prediction you're kind of instead of the model learning some random value for them and you know trying to kind of memorize everything from the training data you say that hey I think you're useless for prediction let me get rid of you you know rather than letting that value learn some randomly high values uh, just to kind of fit to the training data you don't want the model to fit to the training data and learn to the noise right so you say that hey you are I don't think you're kind of contributing to the predictions you are not helpful so let's get rid of you so uh, that's exactly what lasso regression does it kind of reduces most of your majority of your coefficients are almost reduced down to zero this is in exact opposition to what we do in L2 regression I'm gonna come to that in a bit but uh, the alpha parameter right the one which says the strength of the penalty right if you remember there was an alpha component uh, for the loss function so if you go back here you look that so it's some uh, the cost function is the old cost function plus alpha into summation of modulus the alpha is basically just saying how much you know how much do you want to penalize do you want to penalize it strongly do you want to penalize it mildly or do you want to penalize very low so how many coefficients actually go down to zero depends on the term like how many uh, so obviously there are so how many useless coefficients basically are reduced down to zero so obviously uh, useless is not really a, like a you know, these are the useful and these are the useless coefficients it's not like that it's it's an order right so there are 10 most useless coefficient or 5 most useless coefficients so something of that sort so alpha basically determines that how many kind of coefficients are pushed down to zero it's alpha at the end is basically the strength of the penalty right if you want to penalize very heavily your model right you do not want it to at all learn any high values then you want to have a very strong alpha value if you have a very strong high alpha value uh, in case of lasso regression you would reduce most of your coefficients down to zero right only the most most important coefficients would be there and if you're whereas if you compare to that if your alpha value is extremely low you will probably come up with a lot of parameters which have uh, there would be only very few parameters which basically would not be which would be reduced to zero and a lot of parameters which would be not be reduced to zero so now let's see how lasso performs so now we use this lasso and just keep in mind we are basically using the same thing that we have used earlier so the same data set we are using 15 featured case and we see that in hey, linear regression this probably looks a very smoother model right you remember how overfitted models look like they kind of fit to every training data point this is definitely not the case here right it's not fitting to every data point it's a very smooth curve that we have been able to generate out here right so that probably indicates that we have kind of tackled the underfitting problem so now let's look up the modern coefficient and let's see also the plot as the alpha value increases right so what we do here is uh, so this was last of penalization as you can clearly see that these are the coefficients right so this is x1 x2 x3 and so on so after x3 x4 i think which is the fourth coefficient everything has basically been reduced down to zero and if you take a closer look into this particular zone you will see that again most of the things are between 1 to the power 10 to the power minus 7 and 10 to the power plus 7 right so that's that's a, that's a, that's the scale between which it, the coefficients vary it's actually probably seems like zero it's not exactly zero they are varying in the range 10 to the power minus 7 10 to the power 7 all the way till x7 right after x7 it's probably even a very small even much smaller range in which it varies right so this is basically practically this is reducing down all the features down to zero that's what exactly l1 regression does uh, so that's exactly what i was saying after coefficient x4 you can basically see all of them are almost reduced to zero log on to gray atoms learning platform to unlock more free content subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon for regular updates